Is the U.S. government printing more money and losing control? Welcome to Empire Precious Metals. If you're new to the channel, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm a guy talking about precious metals and collectibles. So make sure you blast that subscribe button, get the bell notification clicked. That way you get updated with any new content. Today's video is going to be discussing inflation. And I know that's not the most uh, sexy topic to be discussing, but it is very important. In fact, inflation is one of the very reasons that many of us in the stacking community buy silver and gold the way that we do. Uh, lately, I haven't been really buying as much silver as I have gold. I've been putting my money towards um, mainly gold and lately I've been buying uh, collectibles again, um, just like high premium comics and mainly for my collection and also flipping. But uh, going back to the whole inflation thing, um, the Fed is printing money out the wazoo. OK, we are now sitting at around what is it, guys, 30 trillion dollars, 31 trillion dollars. I've lost count with just the sheer amount of spending that uh, has been occurring over the years. The figure though also says, and I've discussed this in a recent video, that around 25% of our entire uh, currency supply has been printed over the last handful of years. Um, and it's just astounding as to what is going on. Now, silver and gold is definitely a safe haven for most of us, right? We all believe in silver and gold. In fact, this has been a form of money and has been valued for thousands of years across many different civilizations. Um, it is coveted, it is beautiful, and, uh, you know, it is something that is used in various industries. But this also is a hedge against inflation, and it's a way for us to kind of protect our wealth and uh, save money in a way that is secure. The, the dollar, you know, this just keeps on losing value year over year over year and the prices of silver and gold historically are continuing to go up yeah you get some pullbacks but that's normal but overall over the history of silver and gold being traded and bought it is going up in value now is the u.s government printing more money and losing control you bet and that is one of the reasons why i continue to buy the precious metals that i do I have a an expert who I had the opportunity to speak with on this very subject, and they are a lot better uh, at discussing this than I am, clearly, and so why don't we get right to it? I am very happy to be with founder and CEO of Blue Lagoon Resources, Rana Vig. Good to see you again, sir. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. It's been a while, I would say, maybe about five months, I think, since the last time you and I spoke, and... A lot has changed since then, and um, you know I'm really looking forward to giving a lot of the viewers just an update with everything that's been going on with Blue Lagoon. And um, you know, before we do tackle, uh, you know, Blue Lagoon, I do want to kind of talk about some economics first, just because a lot of times a lot of the the viewers definitely like to tune in and hear what the experts yourself uh, have to say. Um, so as you can see here, I kind of laid out just a spattering of, uh, you know, silver, gold and some fiat, um, mainly because I wanted to talk about inflation. Now, this has become a, a major problem in 2021. Uh, why do you think we are seeing it? And does it surprise you with everything that's going on? Well, according to the government, it doesn't seem like a problem, right? They keep telling us they're trying to, they're trying to get inflation to go higher. Well, I don't understand. Every time we go to the store, uh, you know, the bread's more expensive, the milk's more expensive, the gas is more expensive. I mean, the, you know, the car is more expensive. Everything is more expensive. It's going up. So inflation is uh, is uh, out of control. Uh, housing is crazy. Lumber prices have gone up three times. I mean, it's just, it's just crazy. Look, why is it happening? I mean, you know, it goes back to the fundamentals. You know, it's not actually that complicated. I think these... You know, regulators and governments and media try to make it, you know, very complicated and all these big terms to confuse us. It's very simple. You know, we're 
we're not making enough and we're spending more. And, and, and the only way to catch up to that is the governments keep printing more money, more and more money, more and more money. And, you know, it's a matter of supply and demand. It is, you know, as the money supply keeps going up, the value of that same dollar is weaker. It's less, right? You just have to go back and see in time, right? What did a, what did a burger cost a few years ago? What does a burger cost today? What is a burger? And more importantly, even is that the devalue of the of just the American dollar, right? If you mm -hmm. look at a, uh, you know, what does a Big Mac cost in here, you know, in North America or in the United States? And what does it cost across the, in the world? And you'll see there's a difference. Well, why? Because it's the power, of, it's just simply the buying power. So yeah, I mean, the, the currency is just going, uh, you know, uh, is getting devalued more and more. And unfortunately, sadly, as uh, more uh, uh, government spending comes in, and you've seen it here recently with the new administration that's come in, they're announcing, you know, trillions more yeah. that they want to spend. And uh, well, where where's it going to come from? They can only take, they've only taken everything they can out of us. How much more tax can they, yeah, you know, yeah. get from us? So the only other way they can do it is to print it. Man. And that's what they're doing, right? Do, do you think governments and central banks have lost control? Oh, it, it's completely out of control. And I don't see how, you know, however this is going to, uh, uh, you know, get back in control here. Because unfortunately, you know, our leaders are spineless. Look, I'm a little old school, right? I mean, I, I think back to the time when I was growing up. And I think back even, you know, when times my parents were, you know, growing up. You know, we had some real strong leaders. Look, we're, we're not, uh, I think most people are, are reasonable. Uh, I think that uh, if we were told the truth and we and, and somebody really with you know backbone came and said, look, here's what's going on. Here's reality. I know you don't want to hear it, but here's what the truth is. Here's where we are at, and we must do X, Y, Z to right. get out of this mess. I think you know we would all tighten our belts, we'd suck it up, and we'd do it for it because it would take up few years of pain. But the challenge is that uh, the leaders are spineless. They constantly lie because they're you know fed by interest groups. And uh, so, you know, everybody just gets sick and tired of it. Nobody wants to, nobody wants to really, uh, why should, you know, everybody wants to look after themselves, which I don't blame them. So I think everything is just completely out of control. And I honestly, it's, uh, it's sad to say, but I don't see how we turn this around anytime I know. soon. I know. And we just keep kicking the can down the road. Um, I, I actually completely agree with you. And to that point, uh, in your view, do you think the dollar is losing its reserve status? Oh, you know, completely. I, I mean, I, just, I think the only reason that it still has uh, uh, any 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 hope of that or is still around is because still, you know, uh, America is well respected around the world. It's known, you know, for its strength and leadership. And uh, and I think there's just and hope. So I think that people are still kind of thinking that, well, you know, the United States, I mean, that's the beacon. Right. And that's really what's giving the dollar its value. Otherwise, what? what? There's nothing to back it. Right. I mean, that's why it, that's why it's the fiat money. I mean, there's nothing literally to back it other than that sort of reputation that uh, that uh, it, it's going to be OK. The government's gonna, it's, it's going to back it. So I think that we're going to see, uh, you know, uh, China emerge in a, in, a, in a very strong way uh, or already is, right. you know, potentially as the, as the, as the reserve uh, currency for the future. But uh, as far as the dollar goes. Um, I just, yeah, I, I think that we're not going to see this as a, as the reserve. Uh, it's going to continue to decline. Yeah, and I'm actually seeing you and I were briefly talking before we started the recording of this video, and you were saying that you're a bit of a stacker yourself. I remember you were telling me last time too that you had some substantial sized bars, and and you have uh, a decent stack yourself. And I am seeing from a YouTube content creator standpoint, I am seeing more and more channels within the stacking community talking more and more about the importance of having silver and gold because of everything that's happening with the dollar. Um, are you bullish on commodities? Oh, completely. I think we are. This is why I launched this company, Blue Lagoon Resources, uh, you know, a couple of years ago uh, against the trend. I mean, you know, you have to watch to see, you know, and and hopefully be uh, one step ahead. And I saw with all of this money printing and, and this is before COVID, I, I, but just that macro picture of all of this uh, money printing and the debt levels, you know, I, I saw that, uh, you know, uh, it, it, uh, the commodities have been out of favor for about 10 years. And, you know, it, it, they're very cyclical that way. And I thought, you know what, it's, it's about to come back. And I'm very bullish on it. I think that gold, silver, you know, uh, 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 copper, I mean, I think we're in the beginning of the commodity super cycle. And, you know, you can't get worry about these little gyrations, you know, gold pulls, pulls back a little bit, everybody panics. Yeah. You know, this, but look at the long term. Look at the chart 
you know, go back 30 years and, and you'll see, you know, the chart is, you know, pretty much, you know, straight up. Of course, it goes up and it goes come a little down it flattens a little bit. But in general, you'll see it, you know, uh, you know, that trend that is up. So, yeah, I'm very bullish on uh, on the commodities. Yeah. And uh, you you listed a bunch of metals for commodities. Um, I'm almost wondering if lumber is a, a good play because of just the cost of everything, how expensive uh, my wife and I were actually thinking about doing a um, addition to the house, and now that the uh, prices are what they are, it's like okay, we're gonna wait. You know, we're gonna wait a little while. Times three times more. You want to put a deck up? Is like three times oh, more. You know, it's God. it's 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 insane. I know. So I don't I don't know. Uh, you know where that's gonna go, but uh, uh, you know because I you know, but I do know that uh, precious metals and copper. Right. Oh, yeah. Those in particular, uh, uh, you know, have no choice but to go up. You know, copper is, is, is has a tremendous amount of uh, supply constraint. It takes over 10 years to build a copper mine and billions of dollars. I mean, this is not a, a cheap to put to put that in production. And most of the, the low hanging fruit is gone. Most of the uh, most of the, 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 the discoveries have been made. And, and, and gold as well, by the way, it's getting harder and harder to find a, a really good project, which is why we're excited about our project, because we're high grade gold. You know, we're, we're 10, 12, 15 grams a ton. Uh, and that, that's, it's getting harder and harder to find those kind, you know, those kind of properties. So, you know, that uh, combined with, um, with the, the, the constriction, uh, 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 the supply, as well as the, the, the influx of all this, all this uh, money printing, mm -hmm. you know, those are just the, the perfect scenarios, uh, you know, for, for, for gold and silver to go up. Now, let's talk a little bit more about Blue Lagoon because recently you just purchased a rather large stake in in the company. Can you talk a little bit to that? Yeah, look, I'm a big believer of, you know, you've got to be vested yourself. Uh, you know, I'm not doing this because I need a job. I mean, you know, I really believe in this. My last two projects and the last two companies I took public were, have done extremely well. You know, one is uh, trading at uh, uh, around eighteen dollars a share. It's uh, trading at about a twelve billion dollar market cap. The other one's trading at about five dollars a share. You know, it just got bought out for two point one billion dollars uh, uh, about three weeks ago. Uh, in a not that was in the non resource uh, sector. And uh, you know, this is my uh, next big project. And I, I yeah, I just recently added another million shares to my personal position wow. uh, in this company in Blue Lagoon Resources. Uh, I now own about five percent, you know, of the company myself and my family. And a handful of my friends have put in two point two million dollars uh, into this company, uh, and you know we, we own uh, just under uh, about twenty percent of the company. So you know we're vested, we're aligned with the shareholders, and uh, um, I, I really believe that it's important for management, uh, you know, to to have written checks mm -hmm. uh, in the company uh, that they're the, the projects that they're working on. Now you were saying just a moment ago you were talking about gold becoming a little bit more challenging to find now that the low hanging fruit has pretty much been discovered and you said that uh, last time we were speaking you were talking about the Dome Mountain project. Do you want to talk a little bit more about the Dome Mountain project? Yeah, sure. That's our flagship project. That's the one we picked up uh, you know a little over a year ago and you know we were very fortunate to pick it up because uh, it was really a uh, really uh, uh, undervalued uh, in, in our in our opinion, and of course the deal that we got was just amazing. You know, we we got it. Uh, you know, the old previous owners uh, had uh, had spent twenty eight million dollars uh, on this property, and before that, it was another forty million by the you know the people before that. And you know, we and we did it for no cash, zero cash, and uh, all shares, and only twelve and a half million shares at our at our top of uh, valuation. So we got just a, this incredible deal. And it's a very, very uh, uh, important because uh, invaluable because you know it takes twenty years to get a mine permit, mm. a mining permit in, in British Columbia, and, and we already have it. We already have a mining permit. We have an affluent permit. We have an environmental permit. We have everything is required. And the only reason we got it is because you know the owners just got they ran, they ran out of time. They they literally uh, are eighty three years old uh, and I guess eighty four now, and they're not in the best of health. So mm -hmm. they got, ran out of time. They only needed a couple more million dollars to to finish the last pieces three pieces we've uh, spent that uh, that money and uh, in the next 60 days we'll have completed all the amendment work that's required and we fully expect to get a, a make a production decision here later this year after we submit everything to the government so that's a uh, that's huge uh, yeah uh, that we'll be able to get this uh, in, in, into production so we're very excited about it in fact since we talked last a big milestone is going to happen here this Monday. You know, there's over over 6,000 tons of, of material, mineralized material that's sitting in the mine that, that was never taken out. And we finally got permission to take this out. So starting Monday, mm -hmm. we're going to have trucks rolling and going to the mill with all this material. And, uh, you know, we're uh, very excited. We're going to 
probably pour our first bar or something, you know, uh, sometime <laughs> probably mid to late July. And uh, that should, that this, this material should yield us, uh, you know, somewhere around 2,000, 2,500 ounces, uh, plus a silver. You know, we have a, a one to four ratio of gold to silver. So we've got oh, four wow. times silver that we got gold here. So we're very excited that not only are we, are we uh, doing everything that we've said that we're going to do, so, uh, you know, I'm very uh, uh, much about execution, really focusing on, on getting things done. And but also it's going to bring back uh, money into the Treasury. Uh, so we're very excited about that uh, starting this Monday. Now, last uh, time we spoke and before we hopped on this call, you promised you said that you were going to pour the first 10 ounce gold bar and you were going to send it to me because we're such good friends. <laughs> I'm going to rewind that and check that to see if that's, if that's uh, <laughs> I'm a man of my word. I try to stick to it. So let me go back to that. Um, now, that's exciting that trucks are going to be rolling, uh, that production is underway. Um, and on top of that, though, because you're expecting to start realizing some yields with some of the precious metals with the mining production, is it true that 90% give or take of the gold property still has yet to even be drilled? Yeah, absolutely. And just a correction there, just to, so that, you know, yeah. we're completely transparent and not misleading, you know, so it's not production, right? So we're not quite in production. Okay. This is material, this is material that's been sitting in the mine, you know, uh, uh, for many, many years, uh, and we're now taking it out. They just, they just never got around, around to taking it out. And gotcha. we're finally getting, we got, we, we got permission to take it out. Uh, and uh, we will, we will submit everything and then, and then make a production decision once the government has gotten, uh, you know, uh, seen all of our, of our material. Uh, and reviewed it and seen that we've done everything that they've asked us to do, which, like I said, I fully expect to have a, that all done in the next 60 days. Um, but yes, you know, that the, 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 the interesting thing is, this is the smallest part of the story. And what you're, what you're talking about, right, is that the 90%, because mm -hmm. the, the, my predecessors focused only on this less than 10% of this property where the actual, uh, you know, this, this actual main boulder vein is. 90% of the property had never been explored. And uh, so we spent some money and, uh, and we did what's called the airborne uh, uh, survey. You know, we flew these helicopters up and down the property. We did this airborne survey and it was just amazing. The whole property just lit up. And our, our staff, our geologists, our technical team were just literally scratching their head wondering, whoa, how come no one's known this about this before? Well, it's because it's been under the radar. You know, that's how you find something, right? You, you know, you, you look for value. And that's what I saw in this property a long time ago that everybody was really focused on this small little mine, but they missed that whole big picture of that whole other area because we believe is multiple uh, targets and we believe we're, we're potentially sitting on a multi-million ounce uh, uh, a project here. So we are now uh, in January, we announced that we're going to start drilling. That's really how you increase the value of a company like ours. Mm -hmm. You've got to drill more. You've got to show that there's potentially more than what you already have. Uh, so we started, uh, 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 we did about 7,700 uh, meters so far, then we paused just to evaluate everything. And, and, and in the next few days, uh, in less than two weeks, we're going to start drilling again, the balance of that about 13,000 meters. So it's going to be a very, very busy summer with lots of news flow and lots of activities. And uh, 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 yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be super exciting to, to go after and explore because we've identified at least five new targets oh, from wow. that, uh, from that airborne uh, survey. So we're very excited, very excited indeed. So what would you say then? Cause you have a bunch of developments that are happening kind of, it seems like it's all happening all at once. Now all the hard work is kind of all coming together. So if you had to pick one thing that in your opinion is the most exciting thing about Blue Lagoon right now, what would it be? Well, I think the most exciting thing right now in the short term is really that we're getting these trucks rolling on Monday. You know, people, it's a dream for every CEO, for every geologist to actually pour something, to actually bring it to fruition. Mm -hmm. And the fact that, uh, you know, we've been working on these amendments and getting everything done and all the health and safety and the bolting and the water, everything that's required uh, to get the permission to start, you know, to, uh, extracting this material. Uh, we're very excited about that to be able to show that you know we're we're actually executing you know because most most projects uh, fail uh, most people fail because unfortunately they're poor, poor executors you have to execute it's great to plan but if you can't execute on the plan then you know your company your project uh, is going to go uh, nowhere so we're uh, I think in the short term I think that's the most exciting thing that we're going to over the next couple of months we're going to extract all this we're going to actually 
uh, get this cash back into 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 the treasury, and we're going to show the market that look, uh, we are doing everything that we're showing. And that right after that, you know, follow that up by with the uh, all of this uh, all of this uh, all this drilling that we're go going to be doing and chasing after those, those those targets is just super exciting. This is this this year is is going to be a very significant and and, and a game changing year, I believe, for this company. People that are watching this video need to check out the website uh, definitely because it, it certainly sounds like there is a lot happening, that it's a, a tremendous opportunity. Um, founder and CEO of Blue Lagoon Resources, Rana Vig, I really do appreciate your time um, coming back and, and chatting with me and, and all the viewers. And uh, do you have anything else you would like to, to share before we sign off? Yeah, I just want to say thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. And I would just encourage everybody to do your due diligence. You know, we are at the beginning of the super uh, commodity super cycle, in my opinion, and, and, and not just me, you know, many much more learned people than than I am, than me are, are, are talking about uh, about this. And the most exciting part of any mining exploration company like Blue Green Resources is when you're at the beginning of that of that discovery curve, which is where we are. So I would just strongly recommend everyone to do their due diligence, go check it out, ask questions. You know, email me, go to our website, www.bluelagoonresources.com. I'm a very straightforward port, a, a, a person. I love engaging with shareholders. You know, there's an email link there. Feel free to email me. And uh, and it might take me a day or two because of, of the volume of emails that I get. But I definitely will get back to you. And uh, yeah, just to do your due diligence and, and check it out. Uh, we believe that we're undervalued. And uh, we believe that we have a, a long ways to go uh, in, uh, in in uh, in building uh, value. And uh, I look forward to uh to uh, you know, uh, sharing this uh, this ride uh, uh, along with the, with your audience. Absolutely, Ranavig, I really appreciate it, and I can't wait to get that ten ounce gold bar in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate all of you for watching, Ranavig. Um, definitely, you want to check out his company. Now, are you stacking silver? Are you stacking gold? Are you stacking both? What is it that you are buying? Uh, people are getting into platinum now. Some are getting into actually stacking copper. That's something I don't see myself ever doing. But what is your strategy? Let us know down below. And I would like to quickly thank these elite channel supporters. And if you haven't already become a channel member, please check out the awesome perks and join today. With that, this is Empire Precious Metals. Until next time, long live the empire.